Hey Rovers, this is the last video in my $200 mass building series. My name's Alan Mulholland, I'm a solo sailor, and this is the story of how I built my Wave Rover 650. Three years ago, I refitted a 40-year-old Contessa 26 and took her on an amazing 7,800 nautical mile ocean voyage. We crossed the Atlantic twice, but a knockdown on the second crossing and COVID-19 put an end to my solo circumnavigation. So now I'm building a new boat, smaller, lighter, but more suited for a solo circumnavigation. The Wave Rover 650. Well, in the previous two videos, we laminated the mast, then squared it up, turned it into an octagon, and finally, planed it into a hexadecagon that's a 16-sided mast. Now we're going to make this mast just a little more bulletproof by taking care of some surface checking, uh, correcting some of those glue joints, and removing quite a few knot holes. In addition to that, we'll be testing for how much deflection is in the mast. We're going to do some interesting testing on the glue joints, and of course, how much does the whole mast weigh? And finally, how much did it cost? Let's do a proper cost breakdown. All right, there's a lot to do. Time to crack on. Welcome to Wave Rover University. Now, the reason we're here is because I gave you some bad information in the last video about how to lay out an octagon on your mast. And I'm going to fix that right now. So now how should we have laid out the octagon on the mast? Well, first of all, we are starting with a square mast. It was tapered, it was five and a half inches by five and a half inches at the partners, and it tapered down to three inches at the masthead. So the formula is take the diameter times 0.5. 4, 1, 4, which is a constant that doesn't change, it's all you have to remember, equals the side length. So what was the diameter? Well, we were 3 inches at the masthead. And 3 inches, we're going to convert that into millimeters just because it's so much easier. And at the partners, it was 5 and a half inches and that's equal to 140 millimeters. I've done a tiny bit of rounding to keep these numbers whole because they don't actually work out to that, but that is an accuracy beyond what you'll be able to cut with a skill saw. Now, now that we know the diameter, we just take 76 multiplied by 0.5. 414, that's 76 millimeters, and that gives us 32 millimeters, and that's the length of one side of the octagon at the, at the masthead. And now we'll take our 140 millimeters multiplied by 0.414, the constant that never changes, and that gives us 58 millimeters. Now in both of these cases I want to know what is the what is half that and I'll explain that in a middle uh, <laughs> I'll explain that in a minute. Okay so that gives us 16 millimeters and this gives us 29 millimeters. So the next thing we want to look at is what are we trying to say here? Well, in the case of our masthead, we have a square that is three 
uh, inches by three inches or 76 millimeters by 76 millimeters. Inside there, we want to turn that into an octagon. Okay, that's a pretty bad job. That's not to scale. But if it were to scale, each of these sides would be 32. All the way around, they would be all equal. So in our case, we're going to have our mast, and I'm just going to show you the side of it, and it tapered out like that to five and a half inches from three inches. We had snapped a center line right down the center of it, and now either side of that center line, we want to go 16 millimeters, and then down here, either side of the center line, we want to go 29 millimeters. So 29, 29, and over here, 16 and 16. And then, exactly what I did in real life, just snap a line to connect these two. Set your saw to 45 degrees and make the cut. Everything else remains the same. All right, I think that's the end of the lecture. Well, before we leave the university, I just want to take a moment to remind you that Wave Rover has a Patreon page, and I'll put a link above my left shoulder here, and check it out. It doesn't cost anything to check it out, but bear this in mind, Patreon is one of the primary ways that I get the resources I need to continue making these videos. Now, let's get back to mass building. So now it's time to fill these little repairs that I had started. If I had to do it again, I would not have gone as deep as I did. There was no need to, there's no damage really. Probably start out, just take out half an inch. I've taken out more like an inch and a half. Okay, so I'm just going to use a tongue depressor because it's fairly narrow and it's like, it's like buttering bread in a way. And this is just thin epoxy. You just want to uh, get the edges set with this and then we'll come back in a few minutes. You'll see me put a thickened epoxy in. Now for part two of this, I've mixed up a very thin mixture of epoxy wood filler. Uh, sorry, epoxy. Okay, so I've mixed up epoxy um, wood flour and microfibers and the idea is with it being thin I'm just I'm not filling it right up it looks like I am but in fact I'm going to let this sink down to the bottom and then come back and put a thicker mixture in to cap it all off Presser, see what happens. Again, I get right down. And already we can put some more in. This first little bit is a bit tricky because it's just a single saw cut. I learned later on to do double saw cuts uh, or saw cut beside each other. That way you'd be able to squeeze more in or have more room to. There we go, it's three quarters full. We'll just let that settle. I'll do the other ones, come back to this, and it'll be, it'll be full, right the full depth. 
All right, now we've let this settle. It's um, sunk down. It's about, yeah, it's about a centimeter, about half an inch down. And we'll just top it up. This is a thicker mixture now. This is half wood flour and half uh, microfibers. Now the final step is to just put a little bit of packing tape on it and that holds it all in place and makes a really nice job of it and makes cleanup so much easier. So squeeze it in a bit better too. Right, that's it. 24 hours from now we should be able to pull the tape off and uh, we can plane it back. Now I've gone ahead and I've peeled the tape off these these epoxy filled grooves and now I'm just going to knock it back with uh, just a hand plane. There we go. Um, that's pretty much it. I'll just clean up a little bit of residue. And really, it's just that easy. It's a great job. Um, yeah, I'm very happy with that. It was a little extra work. I probably didn't need to do near as much as I took on here. The glue joints are actually pretty good. I was just being, well, an overabundance of caution, let's say. All right, time to crack on. Well, there's the finished product. I'm pretty happy with it. I've planed it back and it did exactly what I had hoped it would do and it's filled it nicely. However, since I have probably one more day of somewhat decent temperatures, I've decided I'm going to go after these knots. There's some laminations have a few of them. Uh, here's an example. How do I decide if I'm going to take this knot out and fill it or leave it? Well, in this case, there's a tiny bit of space just around the edge. So that tells me it's potentially a loose knot and it's going to potentially give me trouble. So I've circled all the ones and now I'm just going to grab my router and take out, oh, about a quarter inch and then just fill that. Well, that goes pretty easily. Uh, now I'm going to just get some epoxy, prime this with the epoxy, then mix up a bit of filler, put filler on, put tape on. Same as what we did for all these repairs. This isn't going to take long. This, to do one half of the mass, take out the knots, took less than five minutes so far. So this is what the holes look like after running the router over them. Let's 
take a look at a few more. Really nothing to it. Well, I ended up taking out almost every single knot on the mast, many of which probably didn't need to be taken out. They were really tight. However, you know, when I got into it, it really only took seconds per knot. We'll just chalk this up to an exercise in an overabundance of caution. So this is one of the full length off cuts from the mast. And let's see, I, I, this is what came off when I cut the octagonal uh, sections out. You can see there's a glue line right here. So that's a lamination. And let's see, right here, it's kind of hard to see, but that's a scarf joint right there. Two, two different pieces of wood. Okay, so now we're going to do a little bit of a destructive test. Pass the camera over. We're going to pretend that Wave Rover is going around Cape Horn. The mast is certainly flexible. Tip just broke. Now yeah, we've had a failure. So let's take a look at where we failed. I'll take the camera again. So it just is just a normal point on the mast. There's no scarf joint. There was, let's see, kind of hard to see here. Yeah, it's just, just a regular piece of wood and we just with the lamination. And the second area it failed was right here. So again, just the wood failed, not the, not the glue joint. And where was the scarf? Scarf is right here. Scarf hasn't been touched. So I'm pretty happy. This, this piece of wood has been sitting outside uh, for the last three or four days. And we've had a tropical, uh, tropical depression come through with tons of rain. So it certainly got wet. It dried out and we had temperatures last night of below zero so it's gone through a single freeze thaw anyway just wanted to show you the the test now it's time to crack on okay so now with mrs rover's help i'm going to test how much deflection is at the mask uh, but first of all we have to know how much do i weigh so i'm, I'm going to set on the step on the scales here and mrs rover can you just take a look at the scales so it's reading, it might be hard to see, it's 162 pounds. Okay. okay, so now I have the mast supported on two points. One, I have it supported right up here, approximately where I believe the mast head fitting will be. That's right, right about here. Let's see. And the other point is exactly where the partners will be. And then the midpoint, I'm going to sit on that and we'll get Mrs. Rover just to film that and we'll record the amount of deflection. Okay, so first of all, we'll see right there, I have a pencil line indicating the top of the mast. Now, by sitting on the mast, and I'll try to get my feet up and I can see we are located on the bottom line. Now we'll just measure the distance between the two lines. 
and the distance is very close to two inches. So the amount of deflection on the mast with 162 pounds on the middle point between the masthead fitting and the partners, it amounted to two inches on this. That's pretty good. I can live with that. That's, uh, that's about an, an amount of flexibility that uh, should work within what I have intended for the mast. All right, next thing we want to do is find out how much does this mast weigh. All right, so now we're going to find out how much does the mast actually weigh. I have it supported uh, on a sawhorse up there at the masthead. And I also have it supported down here where the partners are. So now I'm just going to pick it up. Okay. Okay, we're airborne. And I'm stepping on the scale. Scale is reading approximately 260 pounds. I'm just going to put this down now. And the scale reads, well, I don't know, I guess, uh, let me see, it's uh, 160, 162, 163. So the mass weighs uh, about, about 98, 97, 98 pounds, somewhere in that vicinity. Bear this in mind, uh, I'll be taking approximately a foot and a half off the top of the mass, another three inches off the bottom, and I'll be rounding the mast out more. So the final number is most likely going to be somewhere between 90 and 95 pounds for the main mast. I'd like to take a moment to honor the Wave Rover benefactors. So what is a benefactor? Well, these folks have made a contribution of $100 US or more to the project, and their names will be affixed to a bulkhead inside Wave Rover and will be traveling with me on our circumnavigation. Now these donations truly are much appreciated. Well, Rovers, as I said in the video description, the mass size at the partners and at the head have come out of Derek Van Loen's book, How to Design and Build Your Own Junk Rig. I've put the title in the video description if you want to take a look at his tables. Now, how much did it cost? Well, the whole thing ran about $200. And let me break that down. So we, I spent, well, most of that money went toward the lumber. It was about $140 of lumber. Uh, the Type Bond 3 glue that I used for the majority of the glue up, well, I used probably somewhere about half a gallon. And those gallons, they, it ran me about $60 when I bought it. So that's about $30 worth of glue. So we're up to $170. And then the epoxy that I used to fill the knot holes and any checking that was in the wood, well, I reckon that came well in under the 30 or so dollars we have left. So I would say we really did run less than $200 for the entire spar. Uh, is it finished? Well, it is for me at this point. I'll be putting it up and uh, storing it until the spring. In the spring, I'll take it outside and I'll sand it down to the exact shape and length that I need. And I'll also have a masthead fitting um, uh, manufactured at that point and I'll be able to slide that onto the top of the mast and I'll have to custom fit the top of the mast to receive that. Now I also received a note from Andy Dyes, the naval architect who uh, helped me design the Wave Rover 650 and he informed me that hull number 18 of the Wave Rover series the plans for hull number 18 went out the door so uh, to a chap in the United Kingdom and I am so looking forward to taking Wave Rover across the Atlantic. And I think in the near future, I'll be taking her to Ireland and the UK. Looking forward to seeing a small fleet of Wave Rovers with their Mark III wind gear, uh, wind vane, um, when I get there. So in the next video, I'll be attaching the after deck. Now I had prepped that some time ago. It's high time I finished. As always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Well, the Wave Rover patrons, with their pledges of support, really do make the creation of these videos possible. 
Now, if you'd like to know more about Wave Rover's patron page and Benefactor's Bulkhead, I have links to both those pages in the video description. Now, another way to help Wave Rover, and it doesn't cost you a dime, is by sharing our content on your social media. So now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Give us one more. Brilliant.